Hi, I'm Steve Alatro, Executive Director for Craft Fine Arts Center in Seattle. Now, if you're anything like me, you picked up a new hobby or two during these pandemic times. In my case, I learned a bit of macrame. I'm super fidgety and I found it super helpful to have something to do with my hands that was both creative and therapeutic at the same time. As you can see, I've got various projects in various stages of completion going at any given time. Today, I'm gonna to show you a bit of macrame. Together, we are going to make these beautiful and practical macrame coasters. Now, if you purchased an activity box as part of our fundraiser Pratt Live, streaming live on YouTube, April 24th, starting at 6 p.m., then you've already got everything you need to make this project with me right now. If not, you can always come back to this tutorial by visiting Pratt's YouTube channel. Shall we get started? All right, this, believe it or not, is all you need to make these beautiful macrame coasters. You're going to need a macrame cord, any color of your choosing. I recommend a three millimeter thickness. Anything thicker than that and your coaster's gonna sit too high off the table and your drinks are gonna get all wobbly. You don't want that. So we have the cord, a decent pair of cutting scissors, and some sort of measuring device. I've got this junky old ruler. Uh, you may have a measuring tape or some other tool that will work as long as it measures in inches, we'll be good to go. Also optional, towards the end of the macrame process, you might need a comb or a fork of sorts to help with the fraying of the edges. Not required, but helpful to have. To get started, you'll need to cut one five foot cord and five cords at 30 inches. You start with your long five foot cord and you're gonna essentially make a loop at one end and a circle that overlaps about halfway, like so. Now take one of your 30 inch cords and you're gonna fold it in half so the ends meet up creates a loop on the other end. Take the looped end, slide it underneath your loop and pull it through. This is gonna make what's called a cow's hitch knot. Now, you're gonna repeat that with the other five cords. Under, over, and through. Under, back over, and pull the cord lengths through. Under, back over, pull the cord lengths through. One more to go. Under, back over, and pull the cord lengths through. Cow hitch. Once you have all five on there, make sure they're nice and snug pulling the cord lengths, slide them all next to each other. Like so. Now, I take the long length of your holding cord and pull that. Hang on to your knots and pull the holding cord all the way out so that the ends begin to curl around towards each other, which is going to be the start of your spiral of the coaster, like so. Now, for the next step, I find it's helpful to get yourself set up for success. So you wanna splay out your cords here so that they're easy to maneuver. 
Now, you're gonna take your holding cord, essentially all your knots are gonna wrap around this cord in a spiral around and around and around six or seven times. So the first cord to the right is where you're going to start. Take your holding cord, cross it over. Don't worry about this end little piece, just leave it under there. At the halfway point, the knots will be tight enough, you can just snip that right off the back. So take your holding cord, cross it over your first cord here, and we're going to make a double half hitch. So once you've crossed your holding cord, bring the 30 inch cord back over, kind of in a figure four there, and through the hole of the four. Repeat the figure four and through to complete your double half hitch. And you're just gonna slide that up right next to the first one there, like so. And you're gonna repeat this process, continuing around the spiral. Figure four and through, slide it up next to the previous knot and repeat. Double half hitch for each of these cords all the way around. The cord over, make the four, come back through, slide it up next to the previous knot, and once again for a double, like so. You can already see the spiral starting to take shape. Pull the cord over, figure four, through the hole, and up. Repeat. Like so. Now, every so often you're going to come up against a gap here, and you're going to need to cut a new cord. When you see that gap, there's extra space in here where you could fit another cord. You're going to want to put one in. Otherwise, your coaster is going to be loose and there's going to be holes in it. You want it to be nice and snug. So, cut another cord about two inches less, 28 inches and repeat the first knot that we did, the cow hitch knot. So you have your holding cord, cow hitch knot, the loop comes under, back over, and pull the cords through. Get that snug, and then essentially you're gonna slide that right next to your double half hitch, which is gonna sort of mimic the double half hitch there. You won't even know the difference in the end. Now you can see we're close enough to the next cord that we don't need a filler cord. So we'll continue with the double half hitch. Figure four, back through, slide it up. And once again, to make the double. And there you can see, nice and snug, can't tell the difference from where the double half hitch ends and the cow hitch begins and another double half hitch. Continue along and only add cords where there is a gap. In this case, there is none. So I continue with the double half hitch. Thank you. 
So another gap. I'm going to do another cow hitch under the holding cord, back over, pull the links through. And slide them up. Back to the double half hitch, figure four. Now, once you've made it all the way around a full loop, you can reduce the amount of cord length you're adding by about four inches for each loop. So here's a 24 inch. tag there starts to get in your way. At this point, you can snip it right off.
Now that we have our six spirals, we can finish up. So we're gonna take the holding cord and we're just gonna hold it back over one inside one spiral and push it through. Now, if you have a knitting needle, that can be convenient. I'm just gonna do it the crude way with a pencil. Pull it tight and snip it right there. Now, to create our frayed edges, we're first gonna do a general snip all the way around all the extra pieces. Don't worry at this point about getting it super even. Now you can decide how long you want the frayed edges to be. Uh, I think generally three quarters of an inch or so is where you want to be. So once you've done that first pass, just tighten it up a little. Now, to create your frayed edges, I find that the easiest thing to use is just a standard comb. You could also use a fork if you had a fork or something with uh, tines. So you can just start to spin it. Part cord ends. Sometimes if you give it a little side to side, that will help get it going. Once you've got your edges sprayed, you can give it another trim. Make it perfect. Got any extra bits hanging over? Come back again. You can make these as perfect or imperfect as you like. So 
really up to you. And there you have it, a macrame coaster. And that's it all, you've made a wonderful macrame coaster. Feel free to repeat as many times as you want for as many coasters as you need. Once again, I'm Steve from Pratt Fine Arts Center. If you'd like to find out more about what we do, classes we offer, and ways you can support the organization, you can visit pratt.org anytime. See you soon.